Hey everyone, welcome back to The Privacy Guy. Um, <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about today is uh, Google. Basically, um, I just wanted to kind of share my thoughts about the control that Google has on the internet, the influence that Google has, and kind of how Google's almost become inescapable when it comes to uh, blocking Google's tracking, when it comes to visiting websites without sharing your uh, information, whether that's demographic information, uh, location, um, browsing behaviors, any of that stuff. Um, I think Google's web of influence on the internet extends far beyond um, those of like Facebook or um, other social media networks, but I think uh, Google often gets overlooked because it's kind of become uh, ubiquitous with internet use or like people just think that uh, Google Chrome is how you access the internet and then people just think that Google's search engine is how you search the internet uh, and then Gmail has become the like you know largest most commonly used email service um, so people just equate email with Gmail um, Google Analytics is the most widely used analytics platform. Uh, so if a company has a website, odds are they're using Google Analytics. Um, one, because it helps them, and two, just because uh, the insights are so valuable, and if they don't use Google Analytics, it's hard to, harder to compete. Uh, it gives their customers an edge over them. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanna cover. Um, first of all, how does Google track you? Um, this comes from all the things I just mentioned. So when you, if you use Google Chrome, which I don't recommend, um, you know, you're giving Google access to anything that happens within that browser. Um, there are ways to turn off some tracking in Chrome, but um, you know, since it's a proprietary, it's not open source, it's hard to verify what's actually happening behind the scenes when you use Chrome as your browser and simply because it's a browser and it's owned by Google uh, they're probably tracking a lot and so if you are afraid of tracking or you don't want to share your information with Google don't use Chrome uh, next up which uh, is something that most people don't think about is Google Analytics uh, basically if you're visiting websites they probably have analytics installed it's like a 80% of the top 1,000 websites use Google Analytics. So it's pretty widespread. Its use is, uh, I think it's used on millions of websites. So if you're browsing the web regularly, you're coming into contact with Google Analytics on a regular basis. Um, so you can block that using a different browser that has tracker blockers or um, use a browser add-on for Firefox that prevents Google Analytics code from running when you visit a website. Um, but yeah, basically, if you're visiting a site with analytics uh, and you're logged into your Google account, it's really, I mean, it's so easy for Google to attribute uh, your visit to that website back to your Google account and then um, you know use that to assemble a data profile about you. Next up is Gmail. Google, uh, you know, started as a search engine and they've just kept introducing new products because, um, you know, they're able to just reach out to their existing user base of billions of people and say, hey, we just launched this new product. And then next thing you know, the new product has a billion users and uh, it just kind of goes on from there. But uh, Gmail accounts are, you know, kind of just the same as a Google account. So if you have a YouTube account or a um, Google Analytics account or um, you know any other account for a service that Google controls, uh, you probably have a Gmail account. But uh, the, th the thing about Gmail is it, it has ads within the, the email. So whatever emails you get, Google will put ads above them um, in your mailbox. And uh, you know Google recently, it came out that Google was scanning the contents of your emails. Uh, it's not really big news to anybody that has been paying attention, but 
Uh, Google tracks your purchases on your credit card whenever you get a confirmation email. Google tracks that purchase information and sends it you know, back to their servers to add to your data profile. Um, also, you know, scanning information within your emails um, often is presented as a convenience feature, which it is convenient. It's great that Google um, can offer the functionality that it does, uh, but it comes at the expense of having, uh, basically allowing Google to track um, you know, what kind of email you're getting. Um, so if you book a flight and you get a confirmation, uh, Google will scan that email, see when the dates are, and then will suggest a calendar event based on that email, based on the contents of the email. And um, it's pretty easy to overlook. You think, oh, well, this is an email that has dates in it, so that's why Google scanned it and uh, presented me with this suggestion. But you have to realize that every email that comes into your inbox is going through that same process, allowing Google to scan the contents of the email and uh, make suggestions on what you should do uh, from there. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the, the biggest ways that Google tracks you, but um, I also just want to um, pre like kind of talk about a few other ones. So um, Android is obviously a big one. If you have Android installed on your phone, it's kind of the same thing as Chrome, but just like on your phone because the way that Chrome works on your computer is if you're accessing the internet, everything flows through Chrome. But on Android, it's even deeper because everything you do on your phone is tracked. So all the apps you have installed, um, all the browsing you do on uh, whatever browser it is you use on your phone, um, you know, the messages you send, the time you spend on your phone, all that stuff is tracked and sent back to Google. Um, so that allows Google to link all of your behavior from your Android phone back to your Google account. Um, same thing with Google Maps. If you have Google Maps installed, whether you have an Android or um, an I iPhone, um, if you have Google Maps installed and you use it, you know any of your location data, any of the destinations you type in are gonna be sent back to Google and uh, added to your data profile. Um, so I think Kind of the biggest point I want to drive home here is that Google, just because it's able to collect all of that information, that's not the scary part, which is scary that that's not the scary part. Um, the fact that Google collects all that is pretty on par with you know, basically any social media company. They want as much information as possible. The, f the part where it becomes really scary is the influence and power that Google has just from that data. Um, so if Google hadn't collected you know, all these billions of people's users, all these people's information over the past couple decades, it probably wouldn't be the biggest online advertiser in the world. Um, it probably wouldn't have all of these products with millions and millions of users. Um, so that data we've been just handing to Google for free has allowed Google to become the most powerful company in the world. It's allowed them to become the most influential internet company. Um, just think about all the touch points you have uh, with you know, algorithms that Google set up to steer you in certain directions. So if you use Google search, the organic results that Google decides are most valuable, you're gonna be sent to those websites. Um, and you're most likely to click on those because you're not gonna go to the second and third page to see what else is out there. Um, think of all the times you come across a Google ad, whether it's on Google itself uh, or if it's on a website that you visit as a display ad or a text ad or whatever it may be. Um, but uh, because Google has all this information about you, they're able to influence what you do in the future. And I think if we let this trend continue, uh, Google's going to be so powerful that we're not even going to know that we're being influenced and, um, you know, Google's gonna be able to drive our purchasing behavior. Google's gonna be able to drive like our purchasing decisions, whether we go to a certain restaurant or not, um, all these things. And uh, I just wanna make people aware of that and kind of spread that message because I don't think it gets talked about enough. Um, so that's kind of all I wanted to talk about today. Um, 
I hope this was helpful and provided some new information to you. Uh, if it did, I'd really appreciate you subscribing. It helps me kind of spread my message of privacy around the internet. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos soon.